Three times the suspense. Three times the danger. Three times the terror. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. This is the Alien 3 Ultimate Dog Alien. After narrowly escaping LV-426, Ripley and the remaining crew of the USS Salako enter hypersleep for the long journey back to Earth. But a crash landing leaves Ripley alone and stranded on the maximum security penal planet Fiorina, Fury-161. She's surrounded by inmates whose double Y chromosome makes them the most violent men in the galaxy. But there's something far more dangerous lurking in the shadows, something that may have been in her escape pod all along. Includes display stand and two different chest burster accessories. We are going to get this review underway by doing the first thing we always do, and that's measuring to the very top of the figure. Now, I know. I know. You don't have to say it. No, 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 no. I know. I know where you're going to go with this. No one in their right mind is ever going to probably display the ultimate dog alien on its upright hind legs like this. The dog alien would likely be running it around, crouched down like an animal. But just so that you guys can see how tall the figure stands, if you were to stand it on its full length, Minus, of course, bending the legs maybe completely, completely straight. But roughly, this figure stands 9.7 inches in height. In centimeters, that works out to be 24.6, a little over 24.5 centimeters tall. For some more I know, I knows, here he is, or here it is, compared next to Ripley. I know that's not the Ripley from Alien 3. This is Alien, this is Ellen Ripley from Alien Resurrection. It just so happens to be the only figure I had right here at the time being, but it was enough to show you guys the size difference, the very towering height. And I know you're probably not going to have it standing like this, but what the dog alien does look like standing next to a regular 7-inch tall NECA figure. Just so happens to be Alien Resurrections Ellen Ripley here. Let's now move on to Accessory Town. Accessory Town includes the Queen Chest Burster. This is really, really cool because we really haven't gotten a lot of cool Queen Alien uh, versions. Now, of course, we had a look at the Creature Pack, which had a whole bunch of cool morsels, none of which I would suggest that you eat, but nonetheless, they were all cool accessories that we hadn't seen before, and now we can add these ones to the mix as well. So we got the Queen Burster. As you can see, they're marked by the fact that she has a crown crest on the top of her domed helmet. It's a really nice detailed piece for how small this is. If you put things in perspective, there's my thumb. This is a really, really small piece. It doesn't have a wireframe tail. I thought it might have, but it actually doesn't. It's just molded plastic. It's at least in a slithering shape that it does look like you can imagine it sliding across the floor. Really such a cool looking piece. I love the fact that they've added these additional browns to an otherwise kind of cream colored accessory. Looks really, really good. I even like the grill on the front there. Look at those teeth. Just a nice looking piece. A nice, speaking of nice pieces, uh, the one other cool accessory that comes included with this particular rendition of the dog alien is also the very familiar. Um, Queen logo, the Queen Alien Chest Burster logo, which so happens to be the same one that's on the front of the box. The spiral shape of this, I would love to get this in a larger statue. This would be really, really cool, but uh, definitely a nice looking piece. It's more for show than it is for anything else. I guess you could incorporate this for your own imagination into any scenario that you wanted to, but it's done in a dark gray plastic with some really nice green highlights there to the top of its dome, across its spine, and even also in the base itself. Really like the fact that we would get something like this. Again, if it's just more so for something that's going to sit in front of the figure, then gosh darn it, that's going to be enough for me. Really, really like that one a lot. 
The other thing it comes included with as well is the clear circular display stand, which does have some uh, movement of, of its own, if you will. The post does swivel back and forth. This also rotates up and down, and it doesn't have any means to open and close. It's pretty much just a clamp. The clamp can attach to its leg. It can attach awkwardly around its torso. In all honesty, though, if you have the figure, like knock on wood, I had this figure it's so far with really, really tight joints. I found so far I don't even need this stand. I just jinx things, I know, by saying that. Let's have a look at the figure itself. Certainly not the first of the dog aliens that we've gotten, but boy, oh boy, what a, some nice upgrades that we have here. Now, I don't have the original dog alien. I can't tell you how long ago that was released, but I can tell you how happy I am with this particular rendition. I'm already currently playing with the mouth here. The mouth does open and close, and one of the easiest, actually, I must say, for the smaller mouth inside to open and close. It only actually served just to use a little bit of gravity. Open the mouth, tipped it down, and sure enough, that was enough for the smaller jaw inside to open and close. Uh, the mouth does open and close, obviously. That's one bit of articulation that we can get out of the way first and foremost. Boy, is that ever a neat-looking head sculpt. The head is uh, of a smoother design, but still keeping the same domed presentation that we got with the original uh, Big Chap Alien from the first Alien film. I like that it's a continuation of that, not the scaled, rigid head like the Aliens Xenomorphs. I've always been a bigger fan of the domed aliens, and this one is presented rather nicely. You can see that the translucency is just enough there that you can make out the boned ridges on the interior of the skull. But it's just enough that it's concealing it. From a distance, you certainly don't see it as much. But up close, you can really marvel the feat of sculpting that they were able to incorporate underneath that dome. The dome itself has some airbrushing. It does, it seems, on the either end here. We're keeping the middle section kind of more a little clearer so you can make out some of the sculpting that they've marveled to put in there. Uh, also like the fact that on the front of the dome, it's a more darker color, almost like it's, it's been burned and singed. It almost has that burned effect on the front there. I like the, the transition of how it's darker here and lighter here. Although the transition isn't as subtle of a transition. You certainly notice right there the line that stops where the black is on the front and then you've got like this more brownish color making its way across the dome. The head sculpt though, like I said, is definitely really good. I'm really happy with how this one turned out. You can see all the cool details that they've managed to sculpt on the under section of the dome. Uh, all the just very intricate tubes and other little scales that would have been on the initial alien have been captured here perfectly on this rendition from NECA Toys. Of course, you've got the teeth there located on the top and the bottom, painted here in white. And uh, the inner smaller jaw, once again, working to the help of gravity, has been done in a silver color. So really happy with that one. The alien by nature is a lot more slender than perhaps some of the other aliens. Specifically, you really kind of notice it right here. One thing that's also very much missing from this particular alien that would have been present on pretty much all the other xenomorphs when you start looking at them is the fact that it doesn't have the tubes. It doesn't have the very notable trademark tubes sticking out from its back. Instead, it kind of keeps to more of a streamline, almost cheetah-shaped body. Of course, this would have come from the dog. In the director's cut, I believe it came from an ox or pulling animal that would have helped pull the pod out. I think dog definitely works a lot better when you think of the way the animal moves, the xenomorph that is in the film, it moves very stealthy and, and fast. You could not imagine that the same sort of movements would have come from a xenomorph that would have originated from like a pulling animal, like an ox or something along those lines like the coloring that they've used here. Generally a dark plastic, which is normally what they use for a lot of their pieces. And then they just brush over top the coloring that they wanted to go with. This chocolate brown that they ended up resulting with this particular alien is a nice departure from the blues and the grays that we've gotten in the past. He does have the longer tail. I say he, it could easily just be an it, with the spiked tip on the end. Again, making use of that lighter brown coloring on top of a black plastic. I did notice though that the tail itself is wireframe. 
Well, that's not the notice that I wanted to mention because generally all of these xenomorphs have wire framed tails. But I know I did notice that the tail seems to move a lot freer and doesn't seem as restricted as perhaps some of the other tails. I'm wondering if they have actually started using a different type of plastic for the tail itself, just allowing a much more easier bend than, again, some of the aliens that we've gotten before. The hind legs are seem a little longer than on this particular alien than versus the other xenomorphs. And the likelihood of you displaying it upright would probably be quite small. If anything, you're probably going to resort to having the hind legs bent, maybe in some sort of a running pose. And certainly by then, if you're going to be going this route, bending the tail and getting it displayed like this, yeah, by all means, you can definitely make use of that display stand. Again, you probably will get in a little bit more of an interesting pose than what I just did. And if you want to get it to the drastic extremes of dynamic posing, then by all means, you can certainly use the display stand with the cradle clip. And again, that's just going to either go underneath its, underneath its body like this, uh, or you can also attach it to its thighs. You can attach it to its thighs right here, depending on, again, what pose you decide you want to go with this particular piece. Well, let's have a look at its posability. Its head rotates back and forth. It actually does have two ball joints, if you could believe it. I would not fib you about such a thing. It hinges up and down on this ball joint, which allows the head to rotate back and forth. But then here, it also has a a ball joint which is also attached to a hinge joint. So not only can it rotate back and forth this way, but you have the additional afforded ability of being able to bend the head quite a bit further down if you wanted to, if that's a pose that you wanted to pull off. The torso is on a top ball joint, so you can move that up and down if you so wish. The shoulders allow for a hinge outward like that if you want to go for the scare factor of having this thing jumping out at somebody. And the arms rotate all the way around. It has not only a single hinge, but a double hinge, allowing a full bend movement on the arm, giving it about a 90 degree angle. You can bend it a little bit more than that because I haven't really utilized this bend right here yet, but it does give the hinge joint itself feels a little on the stiff side. The last thing I really would want to do is force that beyond the point of what it's asking for right now, and I'd break that right off, and that would be such a shame. Uh, but it does have a double hinge on the elbow, the hands rotate all the way around. One thing I'm very happy to come across when seeing this guy out of packaging is the fact that all his joints were really, really tight. I didn't have any issues so far with things like loose legs, loose knees, and certainly loose hind legs, which would greatly impact how much stability this, this particular alien has when it comes to displaying it. The legs are, like I said, on a double hinge here and a hinge on the hind leg with a hinge or more so a rotation happening on the bottom of the leg or bottom foot section. You can rotate that back and forth. Technically, the dog alien does have pickles on the undersides of its feet. You can most definitely make use of a display stand that has a little peg. But in all honesty, again, for this particular piece, your likelihood of upright, I know at least for myself, would be very slim to none. I wouldn't be displaying it like this, for example. I, I would be having it hunched down, creeping and moving across the tunnel ways, uh, killing the other, uh, the other prisoners until finally they were able to stop it. I really do like this one quite a bit. The icing on the cake is, of course, the fact it does have all these extra accessories to go with, but it's not really just this is the icing on the cake. The icing on the cake is the fact that we do get subsequent re-releases from NECA Toys, and each time they re-release these figures under the banner of Ultimate, the figure really is that. It's Ultimate, and it's a better looking figure than perhaps the one that we had gotten before. I'm really happy with the color scheme on this one. The paint seems a little richer, and I do find like the adjustable tail seems like it's a lot more forgiving this go around versus perhaps some of the previous Xenomorphs that we've gotten from NECA Toys. Like with the Predator line, the alien figures have been churned out by NECA Toys for years now, and collecting them as long as they've been releasing them, I do see changes with each subsequent wave. The figures have streamlined, NECA Toys have gone back to the drawing board and found ways to improve the sculpting of the figures, which may include brand new sculpts, most definitely can include brand new articulation, which a lot of these older figures, and I'm more or less pointing to like the Predator figures, were more basic in design when they first started coming out, and look how they've improved with new articulation. And the one big difference between the newer releases and some of the stuff that we've gotten in the past 
is the improved paint applications. The paint on some of these newer pieces are just gorgeous to look at. There's nooks and crannies and things that pick up a lot better with the paint that they're using nowadays versus some of the stuff they were doing in the past. I also can't help but notice that the tail does feel a lot flexible. I know I keep going back to that point, but the tail definitely doesn't have as much uh, the kind of not brittle plastic but the plastic that would have would have been around the wire frame tail definitely had a little bit more reluctancy when it came to bending the tail i found like the tail on this piece and i don't know maybe they're changing the materials that they're using for the tails but i do find like the tail moved a lot freer on the example here of the ultimate dog alien than some of the ones that we'd gotten in the past NECA toys also for the ultimate figures always seem to throw in some extra goodies and this one is no exception you now get the Alien Chest Burster, which is a nice little packed bonus. And you also got the trademark Spiraled Queen Chest Burster that's featured here on the front of the packaging. You get a smaller version of that. I would love to see NECA Toys actually release. Can't really do a, like a one-to-one because -one, we don't really know what a one-to-one -one scale would be. But certainly a larger version of this Spiraled Queen. I would love to see that just as an art piece, something that you could put on your shelf. I'm really overall happy with how Dog Alien turned out. I'm really happy as well that when I got them out of the packaging, all the joints were nice and tight and stiff. That's exactly how you want a figure to be when you first get it out of the packaging. Well done, NECA Toys. Well done. If you managed to pick up this one for yourself, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Alien 3 Ultimate Dog Alien. The Ultimate Edition version of the Dog Alien. Don't worry, we'll figure that out when it comes time to put that up on the title. If you are new to this channel or a long-time viewer and never got around to it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and yeah, stay tuned. There's going to be a whole lot of new NECA reviews coming soon to this channel, so keep your peepers peeled for that. That seems to be the thing I'm wrapping these videos up with now. Keep your peepers peeled. It's gross. I accept it. We're going to move along and still move with it. Producers, producers are giving it a thumbs up. Keep your peepers peeled. Members of the mob, there's going to be a whole lot of videos coming your way, so keep your peepers peeled for that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.